that framework knitting reached Ruddington Village in the early 1600s as a form of cottage industry which would have involved the whole family. This may sound idyllic, but in fact the knitters were terribly exploited in every aspect of their work. They hardly ever owned their own frames, but usually had to rent from a hosier who would also give them piecework. Some had to rent from middlemen, who were agents for the hosier and demanded a suitable fee. Anyone who could afford a frame bought one so as to rent it out and make easy money. So, with the cost of coal, candles and other charges to do with work, up to half the knitter's earnings were gone, without them even beginning to think of feeding and clothing the family. A small cottage room with a hand frame monopolising the space would have been the living and working environment for a family unit of six to ten people. Men and some boys as young as ten would work the frame while women seamed stockings and sometimes did ornamental embroidery. Even the youngest children would get involved by winding yarn. Light was precious and the machine would stand in front of the only window to make the most of available daylight. Candles and oil lamps making it possible to begin work before daybreak and continue after dark. Desperate for work and living in extreme poverty, the knitters were isolated and had no bargaining power. Then the industry expanded and began to be organised differently. Hand frames were clustered together at first in groups of about five. Later in larger workshops which would have held up to 50 frames close together. In a small village like Ruddington, where knitters lived close to the frame shops, knitting wasn't just work, it became a way of life. Since the knitting families were now living and working close together, they could share grievances and compare rates of pay. An average working day was between 14 and 16 hours long and candles were an essential light source. A glass bowl filled with water and nitric acid reflected and magnified the candlelight. Knitters started work well before dawn and in cold weather children would be sent in to light candles under the frames. This warmed the machines and lubricated them ready for work.
Good machine maintenance was essential, and knitters shared facilities to deal with day-to-day -day repairs like needle casting. The knitters made their own wooden seats, a hollow shape covered with leather straps for comfort. If a knitter moved to another machine, he took his seat with him. The frame was his second home. Everything he needed would hang on around and under it, reflecting his personality and making his space a strange mixture of sanctuary and cell. Hosier's family, like the Parkers, who lived at Ruddington for several generations, would have led a fairly luxurious life compared to their knitters. William Parker had two rooms downstairs, two up, and also an attic space. His family had their own bread oven and could heat their own water. They also had a certain amount of leisure time. But a knitting family would share just two rooms, with little or no furniture and would have a pitifully basic food supply. At Ruddington, the workers were lucky enough to have some communal facilities like a bread oven, laundry, and even primitive toilets. The framework knitting industry thrived around its workers' skills, creating new employment in service trades, such as smithing and frame building. But at the beginning of the 19th century, new inventions were available to increase production and meet the changing demands of fashion. New machines created unemployment, and by 1811, Cuts in the living standards of those lucky enough to be working caused a boiling pot of resentment amongst textile workers. Many thousands of people swore a secret allegiance to resist the debasement and starvation of their trades. Across the East Midlands, hundreds of machines were broken in the name of a mythical leader called Ned Ludd and the government made Luddism a hanging offence. Eventually, power machinery became capable of making high-quality, fully fashioned goods. Framework knitting skills were no longer needed. Ruddington Village is now one of the few places where the history and craft of framework knitting are being kept alive.